it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today we are going to be focusing on stepping up your embossing folders and there is just one of the easiest, most simplest ways to go about this and this is probably my favorite by far because it is so easy but the difference that it makes is perfect. So I'm going to be using this embossing folder for today. This is the Calming Cluster 3D embossing folder by Altenew. But you can use any, this doesn't, you don't have to have an embossing folder that has a focal point on it, it could be a background as well, so it doesn't have to just be flowers or a certain picture on the embossing folder, it can just be a general all over pattern. I'm going to be using some cardstock today, coloured cardstock, just to show you, but you can use white, which is going to work perfectly, you can use black cardstock, also perfect. But when I came to find my perfect blue color, I had run out and I just had these two pieces. So keep that in mind and you're going to have a laugh later on at what I end up doing here. So I picked out a couple of pieces from a couple of different uh, paper packs and then I'm going to run one of these pieces through. Now, when I took this out, because these 3D embossing folders are so, so deep, there is a tiny little bit of cracking in the flowers. I'm actually not worried about it because of the steps that we're going to take. However, if you are worried about it, then there's something easy you can do. So this is the next piece that I am going to emboss, and you can just put it in just like that. But if you want or you're worried about the cracking, then give the back of the paper just a light spritz with some water, run it through just like you normally would, and then that should stop most of the cracking. In my experience, you mainly get cracking with the 3D embossing folders. I think because they have so many layers, they are so deep. Um, however, if you're having trouble with any of them, then that tip is a go-to. Then I thought it could also be fun later on if I did like a split image. So I thought I would pop these two in here. I wasn't sure because this is one of the pieces where I only had that uh, <laughs> that size for the background. Um, one of the pieces earlier on, this is just one of my favorite blues and I have run out. So that is frustrating at this point, but boy, I will not give up. <laughs> so I was deciding how I wanted these two look later on. This will kind of make sense in a little bit, whether I wanted it to be on an angle and I was trying to picture in my mind what I was going to be cutting out of this. Um, but anyhow, I end up doing it side by side just perfectly and then you'll see in a little bit how this one comes together too. So with embossing folders, when you run them through, they obviously create beautiful texture and depth and I really, really love using them. I think that they're fantastic. I try and keep around 8 to 10 on hand um, at all times and that ranges from background images to more focal images like this one. Now here is the trick. A sponge, like a makeup sponge or something like that, and for the darker cardstock I'm going to be using the white pigment ink. This one is Hero Arts uh, Unicorn Pigment Ink and I'm just going to rub it gently with my sponge and then rub the sponge on top of the embossing. And this is just going to pick up all of those raised pieces. It kind of pretty much misses the background and honestly, I mean you could have a practice or two at this but it's pretty hard to get this wrong. I think if you just use really light, a light hand, so I'm not pressing the sponge down, I'm truly just resting it on the paper and moving it around, and you miss pretty much all of the background, you highlight all of that gorgeous embossing, and yet you still don't lose the color of the cardstock, and you just have this most beautiful image appear even more. So this is just one of my most favorite techniques to step up an embossing folder without having having to put in some serious work. <laughs> so this is the darker one and of course with darker cardstocks I'm going to use a white. But if I use a lighter cardstock you can also use a white pigment ink or a white ink and that would be nice. But I thought also using some pigment ink, some darker pigment inks is going to look gorgeous too. Now I was going for a bluesy look, couldn't decide what I wanted, wasn't sure if the warm breeze in the center was going to be dark enough but it is my favorite color, so I'm going to go for it. Um, I was trying to decide between a few of them. I had them kind of stacked up and wondering, but that's okay. Sometimes you just have to go for it and stop thinking. I took a clean little sponge and then just very, very gently. 
And actually, the warm breeze color kind of ends up looking a little bit darker on this background, perhaps. I'm not sure if it's just little concentrated bits of ink um, on that's catching on the edges why it makes it look a little bit darker, but I love this. It's enough contrast to bring out the embossing but most of all, it just requires so little effort. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a tiny bit that gets onto the background and that just doesn't bother me. It's not enough that it's barely even noticeable. So in my opinion, this works brilliantly. And again, you just bring out that gorgeous uh, texture or if you're using an all over background or the image in this case is absolutely stunning. So these are obviously the same embossing folder. And if I manage to turn it around the right way, you can see that, I mean, same image looks quite different depending on the colors that you can use. So on the process of making these into some cards, I wanted to show you my plan with the one that I'm going to split. Again, super, super simple, and yet this just looks stunning. So I'm going to, again, use the white pigment ink for the dark one, and then I'm going to use the medieval blue for the lighter one so again i think i'm just using the same sponge as before that's okay i dip in and just really gently go over top of it and it brings out that gorgeous gorgeous image now in a little bit you will see that things didn't quite go to plan with several aspects of creating these cards but i think this is the part that went the smoothest was adding the ink on and seeing these images appear you can go as dark as you want to go. You can add as much ink as you want to. You can obviously just add much less ink and you could get a much lighter look. If you wanted it to stay really subtle and stay into the background, then you could definitely use less. I think for these images, it was going to be part of my focal point, so I added plenty. Um, but as I said, you can pair it back or add as much as you want and get the desired result. Now I haven't experimented with everything because obviously uh, I found these ones that work pretty well, but I was wondering, I mean, even if you were to use watercolors and put some of those on a sponge and then wipe those over top, if that would work, you could use, if you had any gold shimmery ones or something like that, I think that would look stunning. I mean, the options are pretty endless. I think oxide inks would work really well because they're going to sit on top um, of the paper. Lots of good options, actually, if you wanted to explore. Now, I have a couple of things here this is one of my favorite stamp sets at the moment this watering can and today I'm actually going to use the sentiments from this one now because I just have a little space perfect here I also have these um, hexagons which kind of cut out the frame and the inside of course so I'm going to take some embossing ink just clear embossing ink and I'm going to pop the sentiment uh, I actually didn't end up cutting this one but I'm going to stack it on top of each other just on this tiny little hexagon and then I have also die cut one in the same grey cardstock uh, that's the one that I'm doing the sentiment on and then I also cut it in a white as well and then that will create a nice frame and border for me. These hexagons are super fun. I've used them in lots of videos and they just create gorgeous little frames. You can obviously use the inside if you wish to or you can stack them when you're die cutting them. Lots of fun ways. But anyway, I have done this one in some white embossing powder. As I said, it's a thinking of you sentiment just because I felt like this matched this card really nicely. I've been needing a couple of these recently and so I need to replenish my stash and that's usually how I decide what I'm going to create for the day whether I am short of something or someone's let me know that I'm short of something uh, then I will work on getting some more of those cards but anyhow for this one I have put some double-sided tape on the back this is going on to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base and these cards are all really really simple today honestly there is nothing um too complex about them but I just really love highlighting the embossing folder it's nice not to have to use a million uh, resources on each card sometimes it's nice to kind of keep it pretty basic and I think this fits the bill for what I was feeling like creating today so when this little frame goes on I think it just adds the perfect little touch and it brings in the white from the outside frame uh, that is the card base as well so super super simple if you wanted to you could definitely add some gems or some sparkle or some glitter but I like this one just as it is. 
Now we're going to move on to the next one and this one is going to be the split version that I created. Now I had this idea in my mind of what I wanted and I think this one worked out pretty well, although you're about to see some interesting fun mistakes when it comes to this one. If you need a laugh then you can have a laugh at me with this one. Um, so I have my two pieces that we created earlier on and I didn't actually have a plan for how I wanted to put these two together. I was deciding whether I wanted it to be on an angle in my head I was sort of thinking an angle but I think it just ended up being much easier to just cut it off straight so I am going to sort of do this in a roundabout way I'm sure there's much better ways to do this and I could have kind of put them together and then die cut around the edge as well with a rectangle that could have worked but I did it with a trimmer and it works just fine so at this point I was just going ahead making the cut and going with it so I'm going to basically go through the center of that right hand flower um, just a little bit off but pretty much the center give or take I wasn't trying to be perfect and then I knew that this one here I could pretty much cut to be the same now I could have layered one on top of the other I just didn't want the bulk of the cardstock I was trying to fit them together pretty nicely so no measuring involved just went put them side by side then I have cut a piece of copy paper so this is just really really thin and it's just creating a base for me to make things a bit easier I added some liquid glue you could use normal um, dry adhesive double-sided tape anything like that anything's going to work this is truly just a base to pop these together before I pop them onto the card base so just a reminder that if you have tried this technique or tried something similar or you were inspired by these we would love to see your creations over on our Facebook page come crafting with Natasha there was a link down below or you can just search on Facebook come crafting with Natasha and it will pop up and join our group we have a pretty large group now and they are all supportive and engaging and uh, really encouraging so I would love to see you over there and I would love to see your creations as usual I will also have a list of supplies down below the video uh, there's not too many for this and I feel like if you've been crafting or card making for any length of time I think you've got this one down pat but anyhow I will leave them down there just in case you want to check them out of course using them helps me out and speaking of if you are interested there is also a buy me a coffee link which helps support my channel as well and keep this going so thank you for that I appreciate all of the support I love the comments that you leave I love reading them I try and read every single one reply to them I just I really do appreciate the time that it takes to leave someone a comment these days uh, and everybody every <laughs> youtuber this is how our channels keep running it's how we get engagement and uh, we just really appreciate it I really appreciate it so thank you so much for taking the time now this is the funny part right because I need a border I want a border but I didn't have enough paper so this is a real hodgepodge I've already put one piece down the bottom and then I had to cut off the excess piece and glue this onto the back of the top cut that bit off and then using this tiny little bit that's left I still need to do that corner so although this looks pretty hodgepodge I promise you that in real life you cannot even see the joins in between everything and no one would guess I handed this card to my husband and said tell me if you see anything and he was none the wiser so even when I suggested that he look at the matting layer he still couldn't figure out if there was anything amiss so it must not be too bad at all but we've still got more laughs that you can have at me later on in this video as well because I don't know if I was just having a bad day I'm not sure what it was but here I am trying to use up every last scrap of this blue paper so this is the scrap that I cut off from earlier um, that I'd already embossed but there's enough there that I can fit the sentiment on it and let me tell you this is what influenced my decision I had to use this scrap so I had to find a sentiment that fit and I need a little happy birthday one so this is from the Stampendous Friends Former Birthday set so I'm just going to mask off um, happy for the top and then birthday for the bottom and all is going pretty well at this point I'm nearly finished filming I'm nearly finished my cards and I was pretty happy with how this was all going I was more happy with myself that I had managed to uh, just use all my little scrap bits of cardstock and still make this work so all I need to do now is put some white embossing powder over top of this so it's going to show up nicely on that uh, darker cardstock so pour it over and then I'm just using the inside of the card to catch it this is at the point you know when I'm just wanting to get everything done and then I emboss it and I'm like wait a minute <laughs> that was clear embossing powder not white 
And for a split second there, I was like, maybe. But anyhow, I managed to turn it over and re-stamp it out again, then re-add some white embossing powder, and then just add this little arrow looking uh, thing here, and this was good to go. I just wanted a really small sentiment that was going to pop here on the side, and this one fit perfectly. It stood out nicely um, on that lighter cardstock. So that is the two cards. I thought I would show you just a fun way that we can enhance our embossing folders whilst making the most of them. And it's just such a simple, easy, quick technique. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video today. I hope you've got something out of it. And maybe we could even expand upon the things that we... Um, sponge over top of them and the results that we might get with that so that might be something i try soon too anyway here are the two finished cards for today thank you so much for joining me i appreciate it so very very much and i look forward to seeing you in the next video so thanks and i'll see you then bye